When I was born, we had been here about a year and a half. I was born in 1952. Mom and Dad moved out here early 1951, correct? Yes. I was 18 months old. That's all I remember. So, so either... So, so either late 1950 or early 1951, it was the same year that they finished the Red Church across the street. I can tell you that much. I was there, well, somewhere. Mom, Dad, I'm scared. I started writing a history in 2016, and I've just pulled a few things out of it. Uh, you don't want to hear most of it, but I'll just, uh, some of it I'm going to have to read, some of it I will just spit out there and Ron can tell you about it. The DNA market was named after my mother and my father, Dale, Dale Ellsworth and Audrey Ellsworth. There, there, thus was the DNA market. This is a picture of the old store that uh, Mom and Dad had, and if you look, there, and on the other side, there was two gas pumps. One was regular, and one was Ethel. It was a Sinclair station. They bought it from the Barkers, not the Barkers here, Barkers in town. We found out they are not related, other than through Adam and Eve. But they bought that, and it had about 13 or 14 acres with it. I can tell you anything I want. I was thinking it was like seven or eight. It was definitely more than seven or eight. Nine. The church still stands there today after many models, remodels, and additions. But this is what the old girl looked like. The store was in the very front part. It wasn't very big. didn't have a lot of groceries in it. But when Mom and Dad bought the place, my Uncle Stan, my mother's brother, owned and ran the Dinner Horn. I don't know if any of you remember the Dinner Horn in town. Stan Brewer was his name, and he was a very respected and loved man. He supplied all the groceries for them when they bought this. He did a lot of that kind of stuff. I'll just add that uh, the front of that house uh, on the uh, west side is was where mom and dad's bedroom was. On the east side, just that one little room was the store. And as I remember, there was shelves around the outside wall. And I can't remember if there was anything in the middle or not. There was two shelves. Or one, one gondola yeah, one in gondola the middle. In the middle. Very, very small. Didn't have very much, uh, very many groceries in there. Well, I, mean, I just love seeing that picture because I remember that store so well. In fact, I have dreams about it. Um, but didn't, wasn't there a family that lived in the back and upstairs? Us. Us. There? You did? Right. Yeah. Before that, this Barker family lived there? No idea. I would imagine so. There were three bedrooms upstairs. The front two windows were the first one, and then there was the middle one, and then the back In one. In the very back. And then uh, behind the two rooms, the grocery store and mom and dad's bedroom, was the living room and the kitchen. And in the kitchen, there was a little cubby hole between the store and the, uh, and the kitchen part. Somewhere in there was a bathroom. But it had a telephone. That sat not in that the bathroom. No, not in the bathroom. In on that cubby hole, it was it, that they sat the phone right there, so you could get to it from the house or the store. And something I don't remember that Paul told me that Mom pretty well run that store, while my dad was out with a uh, black panel truck delivering candy to other stores, and I didn't realize that. Of course, I was only five or six years old at the time. There was a lot of these things I remember because he was in grade school and I was home. So there was a lot of things that went on that I, can, I can't remember yesterday, but I can remember back then. Pleasant View was a very quiet, small town back then. There were about 650 people is all. 
I used to walk over to Critchlow's. I could leave the store and walk on Pleasant View Drive, which had blow pits on the side. There wasn't all this other stuff. And you could walk all the way over to Critchlow's, which is at the roundabout, and never see a car. Now, where everyone else knew, let's see, we're, we're over, what, 15,000 people now? Where, where are we, Leonard? 100, just under 12,000. Where everyone, okay, this, this store, everyone knew and was the center of town was the DNA market. Everyone either came in to shop, to talk, to friends, or to use the telephone. To use the phone? Yes, everybody came in to use the phone. There was a couple of people in town who will remain nameless that were building a house. They came in every day, used the phone, ordered whatever they needed for their house to build the house, and they never in their entire lives bought one thing out of that store. We will not mention any names. Right next door to the store was the gas station. And on the west side of the city, or it was, was, I'm sorry, my eyes are garbage. I, you want to go to the pictures of the new store? And the I gas love station? you, thank you very much. That's why you're here. Yes? There, there was people that would come from, from Ogden and that would uh, come in there. Yeah, Dad was a pretty good butcher. Anyway, this is, this is the old store. Uh, after the yard had been torn down, it was built right, we had a back porch. It was all covered, screened, all kinds of stuff, and it, and it was built right, right there. Uh, after this, they tore the building down. That's the the new building going up. That's uh, Elmer's Brick Saw sitting out in front of there. Uh, Elmer, Elmer Bailey and his orchestra. But they, uh, I lost my train of thought. What year? What year? Yeah, it's it's 2023. No, back, it was 1961 when they opened the store. Uh, and it looks a lot bigger now than it does there in that picture. Yes. On this? That was your family that used to come over and dance <laughs> after they'd sell illegal alcohol. Okay. <laughs> the party. Now, they, they, what I was going to say was when they tore down the old store, the basement is where they put the fuel tanks, the storage tanks for the gas station. Now, that gas station, wrong button, the gas station that they're building there, it had that is a picture of the gas station, and Ron found that one. I don't, I haven't seen that before, and that was pretty neat. We used to push the parking lots with Dad's old 8 in tractor with a blade on it. That's a picture of the store when they opened it. It was AG, it was an Associated Grocers grocery store. Or that's who they did business with. And where am I? Speak to me. And what you don't see on this picture uh, that came a few years later was the big fire uh, department siren that was up there on the top. Uh, Paul reminded me that that went off every every day at noon. No, every Saturday at six. Every Saturday at six. He reminded me of that just now. Yeah. He was close. Okay. And uh, it was so powerful, it, it created some damage to the store that we had to have fixed. Going back to my childhood, living in the old store, our house was the back half of the building. Ron and I had a bedroom upstairs, and those two windows that looked out on Pleasant View Drive were basically our, our bedrooms. Like I said, I'm just pulling stuff out of here. 
Now, what's the store mom and dad owned? There was about, I got 12 acres. Okay. So neither one of us were right. Okay, 12 acres of ground, maybe a little more. <laughs> got, got that. Mostly hay fields with two sections of orchard. One where the old city office now stands. It had about 20 trees on it. There was apricot, sweet cherry, all this other stuff. The red brick building to the east now stands. Uh, the other, excuse me, the other section is between, that's where uh, that daycare is now. We had a, a section of orchard in there. The house that's on 850 West, the Coletti home, that if you go down 850 and it's off the left side, that was up there where the bank was, or where this, whatever's there now, the daycare, that was there. And we lived in that for quite a while. I thought this was going to take about 10 minutes. That's uh, an ad sheet from the AG Food Show. So that was, don't you wish you had those prices now? That my dad. That is Dale. That is the D of DNA. The father of us. That is my mother who hated to have her picture taken. And so she did her very best to hide most of the time. You can see the penny candy rack behind. You see those numbers right there? That's because mom got so sick and tired of the primary kids coming over. I want one of those. This, no. This over, no, not that one. This, and finally she just put numbers up. Tell me what number you want. And they'd say, number three. She'd get number three out. She said, never mind. I, I'd put that back. I want some else. Finally she would just say, here you go. Take it. That was a nickel. <laughs> now this picture is very important because he is part of the store. This is our dog Bruno. If you look how, he's just a regular old boxer built like you've never seen before. And the reason was is the only thing he ate was meat scraps because my dad was a butcher. That's all he ever fed him. <coughs> Excuse me. Dad would keep him in the basement at night of the store. And we never got broke into while he was alive. We had the, the sheriff's department would come around every night and check the doors. Well, one night they found the back door unlocked. So they were in two so one de deputy went over to mom dad's house which was just through the orchard the other one decided he'd go in and make sure that everything was fine so he went in with his flashlight walked down the stairs rounded the corner and his flashlight caught these two eyes he knew he was in trouble up the stairs up the door across the field and bruno was right on his heels all the way to mom dad's house he never did catch him, but I don't think that was Bruno's fault. I think that's probably the fastest that cop's ever moved. <laughs> but that was Bruno, and he was part of the store. He would not... Bird Richens, anybody remember Bird Richens? Oh, yeah. Bird Richens pulled into the store wearing a gorilla mask at Halloween. Bruno would not let him out of the car. He opened the door and, boy, I'll tell you what, he'd like to kill him right then and there. As soon as he took his, ma his mask off, tail, 900 miles an hour. He knew who he was, let everything was fine. But, boy, if he didn't know you, or he you look suspicious or not good, he'd let you know it. There's my dad. And he is... It's been brought up before about what a good butcher he was. Carla's husband, husband, that's me. Carla's father was a butcher also. So we, we have arguments about whose father has the best cuts of meat. And my dad would not eat a hamburger 
at a drive-in or anywhere else because he knew what could go into it and scared him to death so he wouldn't he wouldn't eat it he had probably the most pristine hamburger that you've ever seen in your life Once again, the bur butcher have, block. How come I don't have those pictures? Because they're right here. Oh, okay. I'd like to copy. It's it's in the it's in the envelope. Okay. They're yours. There the is book. Audrey. We caught her on a good day, I guess. And you can still see the all the candy and everything else back there. And this is my sister and my dad. That's Bonnie. I don't know if any of you knew Bonnie. Del Oivon. Del Yvon was her name. She hated it so bad she legally had it changed to Bonnie. That is somebody in the audience. Darla Severine. That is. That's Darla and my sister Bonnie. Mo hold it. Back, back up, back up. That is you. Uh oh, here she comes. She's going to cut the picture out of the. That's, that's you. I told you we had a picture. What you can't see here is another check stand behind this front one. Front one was the busiest one. Once in a while we would get so busy that we'd have to use the, the second check stand. It wasn't a very big store, but. Uh, a lot of groceries went through it. Well, Dad was really conscientious. So if somebody come in, a, a local, we didn't have something they wanted, he would order it. He'd order it Sunday, and the case would be there by, by Tuesday. And he ordered anything he wanted. If it sold, he'd keep it stocked. This was the first cell phone right there. You can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? Decoration. It's a decoration. It was one of the the AG ad deals that they always sent garbage out to, and then Ron and I had to put them up, and Mom and Dad. This is just to show how what a great relationship my mother and father had. My dad loved Mom. You can tell that. That's my dad with a rock over my mother. This is my dad. He was an affectionate person. And that's my mother. She kept her sense of humor all the way to the end that of that. That looks like Paul. What? He said, the other one looked like me, and I said, that one looks like that you. That one looks like me. It does, kind of, yes. Yeah, Mom uh, kept her sense of humor all the way to the end. Or her insanity, I'm not sure which. Now, I don't know who this guy is. When you did good pictures, job on that. I couldn't see me when Ron showed me that picture. Oh, I'll have to share this. Uh -oh. We both worked the, the produce area, and one day we were working it, and Elmer H. Bailey came in. And he walked around, and he looked, he looked, and finally he turned to us and says, Do you have any bananas? And we said, We're right out of bananas. And he goes, Oh, and walked away. <laughs> We've that we we have, we, could we know that it's, I mean, maybe it had to be there, but it was just, just one of those things. But these signs that hung up there, they were changed, the, the numbers come off, and we're, one of our assignments, of the many, were to take those numbers out and, and, and update them. But Dad had uh, one of us, at one time or another, would always check on the produce and order the produce. And that is my mother and me and my 442. Now the reason I showed this picture is because that car right there is an old highway patrol car that we acquired and Lynn Humphreys bought it and he took the motor out of it, rebuilt it, and it's in his truck now. It is, it's a crazy motor. And it was even crazier after he got done with it. It was, it was a 428. It had a speedometer that was certified up to 160 miles an hour. I took it across to Wendover when I was working, and I, I held it for about two minutes at 147. 
don't tell dad. Okay. Yes, there was. Oh, is that it? Are we done? I'm so I'm glad. I'm going to say something. Hold on. Go ahead. Some of my fondest memories, and there's not very many of them, was just working in this front store with, with mom at that front check stand. And she and I always took our breaks together. This was during the summer when school was out. We'd go home together and take a break, and then we'd come back. So mom and I spent a lot of time together. But some of my fondest memories was bagging everybody's groceries and then taking them out to the car, which doesn't happen anymore. Uh, and I, I have to pride myself a little bit on, on what a good bagger I was. I could bag pretty fast. It doesn't happen now, but I got to know everybody in Pleasant View uh, pretty good and by name. Of course, I can't remember most of those names now, but that was uh, something I think about a lot. Uh, is my association with the people that uh, I grew up here in Pleasant View with. Paul still is in Pleasant View. I moved out after we got married after about a year and a half and uh, relocated in Davis County. But uh, a lot of fond memories, not as many as Paul has. That's why he's done most of the talking. But uh, it, was, it was fun to, to go through these things and renew them and relive them with you. I want to throw one more thing in here. Uh, mom, I remember mom being very stressed in the early years and sometimes I just thought she was mean. I found out later that during the early years, the store, the old one, they had just about lost everything more than once. And then after they got into the new store, one of the big reasons, but not the biggest, was that uh, charge accounts. Mom and Dad had a drawer, third drawer down, that run to the cash register, it had two books in it, one A to, uh, or A to K, and then L to Z. The rest of the drawer was filled with people's personal charge account books. And they carried a lot of people for a lot of time, interest-free, never told anybody, they just wrote it, and they about cost in the store a couple of times because they got so far, in, or so far behind. Almost everybody in Pleasant View had a charge account. Anybody that lived in Pleasant View that wanted a charge account could get one. Most everyone would pay timely, but had substantial bills. Others, Dad would have to send a note home to get paid. This went on as long as they owned the store. Dad never let on, but Mom had a hard time during those early years because it strapped them so. But they never turned anyone down for credit. And when they finally sold the store in 1975, only one family stiffed them. I won't say who. I don't think they ever came in to use the phone either. As it turned out, they stiffed about everybody. They stiffed me when I had my paper out. And they had, uh, we even had a family move to California that owed them to money and the guy promised to pay dad. Dad trusted them. They ended up sending $10 every month until the bill was paid. I could go on, but I'm not gonna. I can honestly put this in a nutshell for you if you don't mind me taking just a little bit more time. I wrote this for my mother on her birthday a hundred years ago. 2002. It's called the DNA Market. It kind of puts everything in a nutshell. On a concrete two-lane two highway back in 1951, a man and wife bought a grocery store and a business was begun. This business was just a small store, two gas pumps and a hose for air, with living quarters in the back and a sign out front that read Sinclair. Things were hard right from the, from the get-go with borrowed stock from a wife's big brother, a Christ-like man if ever there was, kind and generous like no other. Business was tough and they gave it their all. They ran the store seven days a week, one day, Bishop Rick come by and asked the husband if they could speak. 
The bishop asked if it would be too much to permit an imposition to close the store on the Sabbath day out of respect for the Lord's religion. The husband didn't bat an eye, for he too was LDS, and it was, it's, if that's what God would have him do, he knew his family would be blessed. From that day on, the store was closed on each and every Sunday. The wife and husband would honor God and reopen the store on Monday. The Lord built us build up business built up gradually, with lots of time, prayers, work, and luck. The husband supplemented their income selling candy in an old black panel truck. While the husband was on his truck route, his wife would stay and tend the store. Not only that, would keep the, keep the house, raise the kids, and so much more. The store became the center hub of this pleasant little town. If a smile, a friend, or news news was excuse me news was desired in this tiny store, it could be found. The couple's work and drive continued. They kept their shoulders to the wheel, and eventually business grew enough. The dream of a new store became real. The husband, or wife and husband, worked both long and hard, keeping friends and neighbors' minds and needs. Nearly everyone in town had a charge account, interest-free, even if the payments were behind. The third drawer down from the register was filled with charge, charge account books. They stood as a testimony to the trust they had. These town folks were honest, not crooks. Most customers didn't realize, though, what a hardship all this could cause, and more than once it almost came to their contract's repossession clause. But hus wife and husband never stopped credit. They shouldered the burden without any remorse. Their faith in God remained honest and true, and in return, the Lord steadied their course. Wife and husband ran the new store while leasing out the, the new Sinclair, and in that store, most every kid in town at one time or another had a job in there. Jobs were supplied, supplied a lot for funding for cars, missions, and educations. And all the while, wife and husband worked, rarely stopping or rest or take vacations. But they always seemed to find the time to put their children first and number one, to teach only good, rich values to their daughter and their sons. Side by side, wife and husband worked and did so for more than 30 years, no less than 12 hours a day, through the laughter and through the tears. The wife and husband could never have guessed how important of a role they'd play, but they touched and changed a lot of lives in that market called the DNA. Thank you. Well, that was a great presentation on the store. Um, feel a little bit neglected, Paul, on the gas station. It just sat there, unfinished in most of these pictures. But that became the hub of the town once that gas station was finished, at least for the guys. We liked to hang out up there and see what was going on. And most of all, it had a lift. You could put the cars up in the air and do what needed to be done and I remember I had this old car and in order to drive it for an hour I had to work on it for about three and I went up there and the Lafleur guy what was his first name? Bob. Bob. He was running the station at the time one of how many proprietors did he have about 12 or 15 over the years? He, he was so nice and he would let me put the car in there and tinker around on it and I just thought he was the greatest guy in the world. And so um, I've run a little auto repair business my whole life, seems like, and my first job was in that gas station installing for Mac Wade a horn on his Dodge truck. He said, I don't want to just inform people I want to blow him off the road. And I don't know if I met his need, but I found a good old trumpet uh, electric horn and wired it up in that blue Dodge truck. He pulled a starting gate for horses, and he'd go all over the Intermountain West with it, clear up into Montana and all over the place. And that was my first job. <laughs> 